Our first topic in the Math Review for Physical Chemistry playlist is a review of polynomial properties. So to review, a polynomial is just any function which can be represented as the following. So if my variable is x, I have a polynomial in x if I can represent this function as a sum from n equals 0 up to some maximum integer, f max, of a coefficient, a sub n, times a power of x, x to the n. So these coefficients have to be real numbers, so something between negative infinity to infinity, and no imaginary dependence, no square root of negative 1. And for the n, those have to be positive, or more accurately, I should say, non-negative integers. So they start at 0, then they go to 1, 2, 3, all the way up to f max. And then g would be as well, if I can represent this from a, as a sum from 0 to g max, of another set of coefficients bn times x to the n. So in each of these cases, f max and g max are what I refer to as n max here, and that is called the degree of the polynomial. So in principle, any time I do this sum, I can keep go, having this sum go up to infinity, because I could just say that every value of a sub n for n higher than this maximum number would just be equal to zero. So for you know x cubed, that x cubed equals x cubed plus zero times x to the fourth plus zero times x to the fifth, but it's not necessary to keep just doing zeros forever. So the degree is just the largest, uh, the largest n where my coefficient is greater than or equal, well, my coefficient is not equal to zero. The magnitude of my coefficient is greater than zero. Okay, so those are polynomials. So what can I do with these? Well, I can add them to each other. So if I wanted to add two polynomials, f and g, I could create a new polynomial called h, and that would be a sum from zero to h max of each coefficient of a and b, from the functions f and g, all, and then times x to the n as I go. So the degree of my new polynomial, the degree of my sum, is determined by the degree of each of these two functions that I'm adding. So the, ma the degree of that, the maximum it can be, is going to be the degree of the larger of the two. So these, these might add together in a way where I cancel and the degree ends up being smaller, but the degree can't be any bigger than the maximum of these two there. Okay, and also I can multiply polynomials times one another. So how might I do that? I have, let's see, f of x times g of x. That's going to be a sum up to the maximum uh, uh, that's going to be a sum up to the degree of the product. So the degree of the product is going to be a sum of the degree of each of the two polynomials that I'm multiplying there. So the degree, so a sum up to the degree, and then inside there I have a sum from m equals 0 to n, where n is the order that I'm currently working on, of a to the a sub m times b to the n minus m, all times x to the n, and that looks fairly complicated, but all of this is just a way to formalize the procedure that we're used to, which is like uh, foiling two polynomials. So if we have two binomials, we know that we multiply first, inner, outside, last, and we get our terms there. So 2x times x squared, 2x cubed, 1 times x squared gives us x squared, 2x times negative x gives us negative 2x squared. And what's the last term that remains here? Uh, 1 times negative x gives us negative x. So we get those four terms, which is just every possible combination of the coefficients here. And then the order of them is the sum of the orders of each of the terms that we're multiplying there. And then those all work together. So these two terms are, or sorry, these two terms are both quadratic. So we can add those together. They end up giving us a coefficient of negative 1 for n equals 2. 
and all the other ones are the only term that they have at that order. Okay, so that's multiplying, adding, uh, even simpler as we saw up here. Uh, if we have x cubed is the only cubic term that remains by itself. We have x squared and 3x squared gives us a 4x squared. We have negative 2x is the only linear term, so that gives us negative 2x. And then we have 4 minus 1 for a final answer of 3. All right, and also uh, going back to the order here, so the order of various functions that we might be familiar with with some more numerical examples. We have 4 is a constant, so that's order 0. We have 2x is an order 1, linear. x cubed is cubic, that's order 3. 2x squared minus 4, that has a quadratic term and a constant term, so quadratic is the biggest, so that's a 2 for that exponent there x to the fourth minus x cubed plus x is has four as the biggest exponent, that's order four. And lastly, the special case of zero, which we define to be order of negative infinity. And that's defined this way so that for products, zero times anything is gonna be zero, so that has to make it to where this uh, order of a product works out correctly because anything times zero should still be the order of zero and that makes uh, this works correctly whenever you have negative infinity assigned to be the order of zero. Okay, so those are some of the basic properties of polynomials, functions which I can represent as this type of series in X and we can add them, we can multiply them and they have a, a an order which we can describe.